Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Eric Skeldon. Thanks for being on the show, Eric. Hey, thanks, Whitney. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, happy to have you on the show. I've really enjoyed our conversation just a few minutes before recording. And, and uh, I love, you know, your, your uh, military background. I can relate to that. And, and just uh, in many ways, I think we can relate. But uh, I'm just anxious to hear how that's uh, shaped your business and shaped your mindset and, and even other things that have uh, gotten you where you're at. So, uh, but a little about Eric, in case you've never heard of him uh, before, he's a former Army Airborne Paratrooper. Uh, thank you for your service grateful uh, for all our men and women that are serving uh, to keep us safe. And he made millions in sales uh, in corporate W-2, but left to become a full-time entrepreneur. Has an amazing wife and four daughters. Eric, Eric, grateful again for your time. Thanks for being on the show. I love how you put that in your bio, amazing wife uh, and, and four daughters. Uh, I love that. So, uh, but give us a little more about your background. I, I'd love to dive into, you know, just your, your mindset and especially coming from military and, and, you know, leaving uh, the corporate W2 where it sounds like you were very successful, you know, in jumping into uh, being an entrepreneur. Yeah, I appreciate it, Whitney. And uh, first, thanks for having me. I'm super excited. So yeah, it's, um, you know, I've kind of had the entrepreneur spirit, you know, growing up, um, just kind of, you know, I saw kind of just my dad working uh, corporate finance. He came here from South Africa, got a, he was a number one tennis player um, in South Africa in the 80s, and went to Auburn. Uh, but he was working in corporate finance for 20 years. You never really like made it up the corporate ladder, just stayed around the 60 to 70,000. So I'm mean, very frugal, but I was like, I knew that this wasn't a, a lifestyle that I really enjoyed, you know, and he had an MBA and CPA, all these certifications and corporate. So, but everyone told me, or he even told me when I went to school or after I, I went to the military um, or Texas Army National Guard, um, became a paratrooper to the only, you know, paratrooper unit down in Austin. And um, after that, you know, he, you know, I wanted to do like radio, television, the film, or do like, you know, broadcasting and filmmaking and become a like documentary, you know, shoot documentaries in Africa and expose like all this stuff. I don't know. I had all these like visions, but he was like, you got to make money. He's like, go get a business degree. So I was like, oh, that's practical. I'll get a business degree. And when, you know, once I went back, the army paid for it. And by that time I already had um, almost two years of schooling done. So I just had, you know, a couple years left, went and did that, um, finished up, you know, business degree. And, you know, you know, it was really, I, I thought like the schools were like, you're going to go land a job. You're going to be able to do this and that once you have these degrees and all this knowledge. And, um, you know, even we had even some good courses where we got to work with Target on, you know, helping their supply chain handle throughput and fix problems in their business. So I was like, man, we have, you know, but I didn't get an offer for about a year um, for like a, a good job. And then finally after a year, I got a sales job in software sales, selling to the trucking industry. Um, that was when I first, and be, before that happened, I said, I told myself, I said, who, whatever company hires me first for sales, you know, I'm going to do millions in sales for them. And I just kept, you know, saying like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a million dollar salesperson just because I knew I believed in my ability, but you know, growing up in school, I really struggled. I was a BNC student, struggled with dyslexia, struggled with um, just, yeah, being, you know, teachers calling me stupid and dumb. So I just, you know, I was like, oh, I'm ADHD. So I just became a class clown. So even getting up to the point of going to college and stuff was a kind of an uphill battle. And um, of just having to, you know, be like, okay, God, you know, God is for me and having some good mentors around me and good leaders that started speaking something different. And, you know, you know, shifting from friends who were just, you know, just partying and smoking weed and all that stuff. And so, so ended up, yeah, once I got that job, um, ended up doing well there and then going to an account management job in supply chain. And that was when I started managing accounts and got a full-time assistant and, um, and was doing millions in uh, sales and shipping invoices and managing freight across the country. And then, um, and then basically 
my fourth daughter um, was born and three months prior, I set up an LLC to start flipping houses and do wholesaling. Um, I just, I, I felt like that's, you know, after I was earning good income, I was like, I need to set up something just so I can start, you know, figuring out how to, you know, build this 10 to 20,000 business on my, with my own LLC, my own business on the side and then hired some virtual assistants. And then like three, four months later, my daughter was born, my fourth daughter and the rest of them were still at home uh, with my wife. And my wife was dealing with postpartum depression after the um, pregnancy. And I, I, um, she just really was needing help, needed me to be there. So I, I tried to work out a remote position, kind of like the, you know, Tim Ferriss for our work week, try to work out a remote position. Um, but unfortunately the, it ended up just happening where, um, yeah, basically they were thinking I was going to trying to go to another company and try to take all my clients to another firm. And, um, just basically just, I, 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 when I went on FMLA, pretty much got everything stripped from me, everything taken from me from that business, which kind of solidified my, my belief in entrepreneurship and, you know, corporate, you know, not, not just working for one company that you're, you know, your whole life. And, and that's kind of, that's kind of been my message is just like trying to shift, shift mindsets from, you know, oh, you have to just do 60, 80 hours working for a company and to be successful, you have to just, you know, and, and really I subscribe to more that there's, I believe we're going to come into a time where, um, you know, you can put 20 hours of great work towards, you know, an idea or a business or something without all the, you know, just checking emails, checking text messages, surfing the web, you know, really being on Netflix or doing all these other things. And if you put 20 hours, kind of like the 80, 20 principle that you're actually putting 20% is actually, you know, um, being the 80% of the outputs. And so really, um, my, my main message is to, you know, inspire people to, you know, spend more time with their wives, spend more time with their kids, and um, figure out a system and scaling and solutions so they can actually um, do that. And still, you can still earn, you know, 10,000 a month doing something while still spending time with your family and having a good marriage that, you know, you don't just climb up the corporate ladder and end up getting a divorce, but you have a Ferrari or something. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, I'm on track for that myself. I, I, I love thinking about how I can spend more time with family and, and, uh, you know, I've, I've missed a lot of time with family, you know, trying to, or be an entrepreneur pursuing a business and, and growing and, and, and finally, you know, we decided or made some hard decisions so we can shift and have more time at home, you know, cause we know that's more important uh, than, than, you know, having a Ferrari, like you said. So, uh, Eric, yeah, yeah. So tell me a little about though, you know, how, um, you know, uh, how did the military prepare you for some of these hard things you had to uh, endure? Yeah, I think the military really, it really helps you see that it's not, it's not just about yourself and it's not just about, it's a, it's a team aspect. You know, you're, you're doing everything for the, you know, the people next to you, your battle buddy, the people in the field with you. Um, and basically it's like a, it's like a self-sacrifice and just, um, doing, doing things that you don't want to do. Um, and, and it's still having a positive attitude and still pushing forward and, um, and then just having the reward of just knowing that you went through that together with people. And, um, so it's just like a, it's like a, yeah, you know, as long as you don't give up and you keep pushing forward, you're always going to win. And so that's kind of an, uh, a mindset I've definitely taken towards, yeah, any company I've worked towards or any business I've, or endeavor I've done. Yeah, I feel like the military really helped me to have that never give up mentality and just help me, you know, have that, that mindset where I can keep pushing. Um, and, and, you know, but you don't have to be in the military to have that right? Or, or to gain something like that. You know, what do you say to people that, uh, you know, they're striving to be an entrepreneur, but they, they don't have the military background. However, you know, they, they are still, uh, you know, hard charging. They're still very driven. Um, you know, how do they focus? How do they, uh, how, you know, do that like you've done? Yeah, I would say, I would say just, um, you know, set, set, some, set some structure. I mean, even we're, we're here in COVID-19, like set structure of still, you know, trying to, you know, set your alarm and or even just get to the point where you're waking up on your own, you know, uh, still exercise, still shave, shower, you know, uh, not just being in your PJs all day. Um, and then just, um, you know, make, make goals for yourself, um, you know, create a vision board of 
you know, and ask yourself, what do you really want? Because if you're just going after a ton of things, and I've even learned this more recently, if you're just going after a ton of things, but you never really know why you're going after it, or you never know what you're really going after, it's like, it's hard to get there, you know? So I meet a lot of people who just want to, you know, they say they want to do this, they say they want to do that, but they don't know why, and they don't know what they really want. They're just like, oh, I would like to be rich, but maybe I'm just going to buy a lottery ticket, and one day that's, you know, just going to happen, and and so I, I believe that, you know, you are your best lottery ticket and you are good soil and you're the best person you can invest in. I, I agree completely. You're, I love that statement though. You are your best lottery ticket. Uh, it, it's definitely, uh, I'd much rather bet on myself than, than put a lot of money in the lottery. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, you know, Eric, what about, you know, and some other tough times there, you know, like the, you know, you had to make a shift so you could be at home more and then, you know, tell me, and I love that sacrifice too. I just think, it, you know, it's so much more important, uh, like you said uh, to me as well, you know, supporting my family as opposed to uh, going up the corporate ladder. Uh, but that's, you know, we got, we get caught up in those things often, right? You know, and it's hard to, to see that sometimes when you're in the middle of that. But, you know, how did you, how, how did you do that? How did you make that decision to say, you know what, you know, this is more important uh, than whatever that corporate position could give us. Like my family's more important and this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And so I, I feel like, you know, it, the decision that it actually ended up, um, you know, I made, I made a decision to ask, ask for remote work and stuff, but the, it kind of was, yeah, it was, it was kind of thrown on me because I didn't know that, you know, asking, you know, because I was one of the top 10 salespeople with a full-time assistant and I had, I had all the proof of when I was working remote, I was still doing, you know, um, you know, thousands of dollars in sales from my home office that I'm in now. And so, you know, I, I actually, you know, I wasn't, I was trying to do both until the time when I was like, gonna, you know, ask, you know, I wanted, you know, everyone says, Hey, before you leave a W2 job, make sure, you know, your good job, make sure you replaced it. You know, at that time I hadn't yet replaced my income. And so it was kind of, it was kind of just thrown on me or everything was stripped away and then ended up, yeah, being in a, yeah, being in a position where it's like, now you, you're, you don't have a choice but to succeed or you don't have a choice but to win and figure out, you know, um, a way to make it happen, put all your energy you were into that, building that first, you know, business um, to the other one. So it's, I, I can't say that I'm like, you know, I just made a decision to quit and not have the $15,000 a month I was used to having. Um, you know, I really, it really just ended up being, I was kind of forced to where it was like, you know, I, I asked to, you know, take care of my wife and, you know, you know, serve her from home while working from home with a full-time assistant I was paying. And then it just, um, yeah, it just escalated quickly. And then, yeah, so I was kind of forced into that, into the grit mode of having to make it happen. And so, you know, if I could, I would, yeah, I don't, I don't encourage people just to, you know, Hey, if you're making six figures, just dump it all into your first, you know, idea and, you know, just see how it goes. Cause as we know, 90% of businesses fail and not to be like, you shouldn't have the mindset of, Oh, I'm going to be one of the 90%. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's good to test, you know, if you have funding of whatever you're doing, it's good to test on the side. Say you're, going to do, you know, you want to set up a wholesaling or you want to have buy and hold, you know, just, I mean, as we're seeing right now, I mean, with, you know, oil, like, you know, if you, if you were going to invest, if you're going to set up an oil company, you know, a year ago, it might not have been the best time because it all, you know, now oils, you know, oils down like 90% or I don't know. So what were some of the first things that you did when you knew you didn't have a choice, but to be an entrepreneur? Uh, so honestly, for the first week, I was kind of just in a mode of like depression and like, what the heck, what do I do? Um, and, and so I was kind of, you know, a little bit depressed for like a, for a week. And then I was like, what, like, I, it doesn't matter what happens to you. It matters how you respond to it. I got to, you know, and then I just started uh, calling, you know, calling at the time I had a buyer's list here in Kansas, started calling them, uh, started um, seeing, Hey, how can I serve you? What kind of deals are you um, looking at here in Kansas, what kind of, are you looking at multifamily? Are you looking at single family? Um, are you want buy and hold? Do you want just something you can flip or do you want something you can, and I just found, found their criteria. What are, what are the investors that have cash in their, 
and their bank. What are they looking for here and how can I best serve them? I started taking the same thing I did for my clients, you know, big corporation clients like Walmart and stuff, you know, they're, you know, shipping logistics people into, you know, so I just use the same skills into my day-to-day operation and started serving those clients and saying, and then I just started finding them deals. Hey, this is what you want. I'll be your number one guy. I'm going to find you those exact deals. And obviously you don't mind paying me 10% because I'm going out there and doing the work for you. Mm. You were very proactive. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, I mean, there's people all over that are, there's companies that will pay you. If you learn how to do Facebook ads and Instagram ads, there's companies that will pay you to do that for them. There's, if you, if you have people who want to find multifamily deals, um, there's tons of people who want good deals out there and they'll pay you to, uh, find those deals and they'll pay, you know, I now, you know, I've only done it for less than a year and now I have people, you know, learning, I'm, you know, really interested in syndication and, um, just having, you know, you know, basically private money. And so now, you know, I have an investor in California who's bought a couple of deals for me and now he's like, Hey, you know, I'm starting to get now just from connecting and meeting people, you know, starting to get a lot of multifamily deals, apartment complexes, different stuff or different, you know, you know, a whole bunch of houses at once, you know, or package deals, house deals. And so they're like, Hey, if you, you know, I have, we can get a syndication going, you know, he has, you know, people that are doing stuff at a way higher level, you can start meeting them pretty quickly just because you're serving them and helping them and um, finding them, you know, deals. And then now, you know, if we find a good deal, he's like, Hey, I can syndicate this with you. We could do this together. And so it's, that's why I really like the real estate industry and people are really um if i mean if you just serve and you go out there and try to help people people are really um pretty transparent and pretty um, willing to help especially if you're just um if you're just yeah always trying to see how you can help them um, people are willing to do it back yeah i love how you said too it doesn't matter what happens it, it just matters how you respond to it um, I think that's a great mindset to have. You know, is there any any other resources or books that you recommend uh, just for mindset alone and being able to push into in through things like that that are difficult? Yeah, um, extreme ownership was big, uh, huge mm-hmm. for me. Uh, Jocko Willink. I don't know if I I, I watched his Instagram four thirty in the morning post. I, I haven't done his four thirty workouts, but at the same time, just taking extreme ownership of like you know he had a story of. Um, of you know when his he's supposed to be this big commander's navy seal commander but then in battle he had you know they had his team and his under his leadership had friendly fire and they're shooting you know and people be like how would you know the most experienced leader and navy seal leader their teams be shooting at each other in the in the midst of chaos and fire and you know in iraq or afghanistan i forget where it was but um and so yeah i mean I, but at the end of it you know everyone tried to take you say oh it's this people's fault this people's fault and he just you know it was like hey look this is i was the commander i was the senior commander this this fault's on me and he took you know and he could have got a lot of repercussion but he ended up um yeah ended up you know just growing from that and you know not getting into any anything with it you know but just um the idea of just like it doesn't i don't know we we ha- even our millennial generation we have you know a generation where we want to blame climate change we want to blame you know the president or blame whoever and it's like look like we we have we have control of what we do and if you want to if you want to make change like you can go you can go run for office or you can go start a business and once you do those things you actually see how tough it is you know if you're, if you're getting taxed, you know, 50%, you're going to be like, Hey, yeah, we need to make different laws. They're taking half my money and I'm doing all the work, you know? So Eric, what's a way that you recently uh, improved your business that we could apply to ours? Yes. Um, so right now, right now with online, I just recommend, um, yeah, getting what you see Whitney doing a podcast, um, learn from how people are doing podcasts, uh, Facebook lives, LinkedIn lives, you see the best content creators uh, pouring out content, Gary V, Patrick, but David, uh, YouTube channels. I think all these, all these channels of, um, you know, whether you have, if you have a message, you know, you know, doing an online course, um, figuring out how to get your message into a course or YouTube or um, building a group or building a, you know, so that's what I've really been able to pivot is, you know, Facebook groups, um, 
yeah, I'm starting a podcast um, soon. And so just being able to uh, pivot and um, even e-commerce, e-commerce is um, good, good right now. So just um, figuring out ways to pour some money into other buckets and um, figure out um, different ways uh, to, uh, yeah, to make money online while people are from home. I mean, and, and during any crisis, there's a, there's a way to still help people to still expand and to still figure out how to uh, persevere while everyone's at home, you know? What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I would say just, um, just God. Yeah. Believing in God, my relationship with the Lord. Um, he's, yeah, just at the forefront. My wife is this, anytime I get to like, you know, focus on anything crazy or ideas, I've learned just to actually ask my wife for her input and actually like value it, you know, even though you could think, Oh, I have the degree or I've, you know, had the millions in sales or, or even anything. It's like, you know, value your wife's, if you have a wife, like value their opinion on business. Cause she could have saved me a ton of money and things I've invested in. And so, um, so that, and then just, um, yeah, I mean, Proverbs is really good for, um, for investing and, um, uh, and then just, uh, yeah, believe it in yourself and your trust, your gut and trust what, um, you know, if, you know, the world will, could tell you that, you know, Facebook was a bad idea to invest in Starbucks. Um, but you know, that, you know, you still got to believe in, uh, your idea and keep, I mean, the most people I've seen that are successful. And even for me is just, um, just keep, keep believing in what you do, um, and be confident in what you do. Cause if you're not confident or you don't believe in what you do, you're not going to get clients or you're not going to get, you know, build a team, whoever believe in your vision. So you just got to keep, yeah, keep believing in yourself and believe in, um, yeah, if you, yeah, believe in God, uh, God will, he'll favor you and put you in the right places and open up doors that you could never open. I love how you mentioned earlier, God is for you. You know, like God is for me. Even if we're in a hard time, like he's, he's for us. Yeah. I've seen him come through in the craziest ways through, through this month of just being at home. And it's, um, it's just cool to see like, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's a plague or pandemic, you know, there's been so much joy and peace uh, just because of knowing who he is and the promises he has for us. Hmm. Eric, how do you like to give back? Uh, I like to give back um, just, yeah, by helping, uh, helping people. We, we're, my wife and I are um, also working to fight uh, human sex trafficking here in uh, the Kansas area. And um, so just um, hopefully in the future, we want to set up a nonprofit for that right now, just helping some, you know, local people. And there's a lot of good people, ex-military SWAT who are helping, um, you know, bus, bus different, um, uh, yeah, pedophile rings and, uh, human sex trafficking. So, uh, that's something I like giving back, but, and then also just, uh, blessing people who are, have ideas or startups and just, um, you know, being able to bless them into what they're doing. Nice. Well, I appreciate you sharing that, Eric, and, and just your all's desire to give back in that way. Um, how can the listeners get in touch with you and learn more about you? Yes, um, you can go to kingdompassiveincome.com um, or Eric Skeldon on Facebook and, um, and ericskeldon.com. And yeah, we, um, yeah, starting a podcast and hopefully we'll get Whitney on uh, soon about uh, just kingdom entrepreneurs. I feel like it's a time for uh, entrepreneurs to rise up and, uh, that, um, a kingdom entrepreneur that, you know, seeks first the kingdom, um, basically can change and solve every problem, uh, we have on earth, whether it's government, um, you know, government, business, um, social issues. I feel like there's a kingdom solution, redemptive solution that can solve every problem we have in the world. And so I think it's time for, yeah, it's time to, for those people to rise up and, start solving each problem. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.